Okay, folks, it's your buddy, Mike Messier. Just saw whatever it's called, Godzilla and Kong, the, the 2024. What the hell's going on around here? Uh, saw the movie. What did I think? It's okay. I mean, it's actually good. It's, um, so here's my quandary. It's, it, this movie is pretty much what you'd expect. It's big. It's epic. They've got the orchestral music. The uh, special effects are really good. I made a wonderful point to see this on the IMAX 3D, big screen IMAX 3D. I cannot recall if I've ever seen an IMAX movie in 3D before, or if it, if I had, it's been a while. This was quite impressive as far as, far as the old FX go. Storyline, I mean, I really just felt like I was watching any number of other movies that we've seen like this, the Jurassic Park films, uh, you know, anything where, oh, the world is in crisis and only these five assholes can help, you know, and it's always, you got this one, you got the conspiracy nut, you got the fucking scientist with the adopted kid. The adopted kid has to help out. I mean, it makes me think of the Meg, you know, I think they had like an adopted kid in that movie or a kid of some course, some kind, there always has to be like a little variety of characters where every audience member can relate to one or two of them. So I don't know. It's just, it, I mean, it does feel formulaic. However, I think in this particular film, they did well with the formula. The, the, the ingredients melded well. And uh, for what it was, it was good. Now you can see that it's still sunshiny today. My other little grievance or gripe is... I wanted to see this thing on the IMAX, on the 3D. It's The film started at four, uh, what time did it start? Film started at, uh, bell time was four o'clock. So it really got going at 4.20. I was into the theater right around 4.21. I did see like the legendary pictures, you know, like, so I basically got in there as the movie was starting before the opening uh, you know, Kong vs. Godzilla. I might have missed a moment or two. I don't think I missed anything that relevant. Um, but like I said, I, I do enjoy going to most movies uh, either at night, you know, darkness has settled in, or on a rainy day. But the IMAX 3D uh, was not available besides this time. They did not have the IMAX 3D available at night. So this was basically this. So I feel like I might have enjoyed it more had it been nighttime. Because I feel like when I don't uh, accomplish things during the day, when I don't want to, when I don't do what I want to do during the day because I'm seeing a movie, I feel a little miffed and a little upset. So my enjoyment level is lower. Once again, folks, I keep telling you, and hopefully it resides. It's really the mood of seeing some of these movies. So I did want to see this movie, but I kind of felt um, trapped and cornered that if I wanted to enjoy this epic spectacular the best possible way, I had to see it in IMAX 3D. And the, my time choices, I couldn't dictate to the theater when they show the IMAX 3D. They dictate to me. So I went with what I could. And, then, you know, I feel like I kind of missed out on a couple of hours of sunlight here. Like a farmer, okay, in 1865 or whatever the fuck. So I don't know. It's just fine. It's just, is my life changed? I think I, no. I mean, I think I enjoyed the movie for the first, you know, I really got into the first 20 or 25 minutes because the spectacle of Godzilla stomping through and all that horse shit, that's the best part. And then when it gets to just be another, oh my God, the world's going to end unless we do some crazy shit movie, it's like, okay. Yes, Independence Day, 1996, whatever the fuck, whatever the fuck. We've seen this a million fucking times. These five collected assholes, one's an intelligent woman, one's a kid, one's a conspiracy nut, and of course, uh, some other fuck with an accent. They're all going to save the world, and thank you. Thank you, five assholes who don't exist, for saving the world from these monsters that don't exist. Meanwhile, there's real problems in the world that do exist. Anyway, it is it is what it is. I forgot that this movie's a sequel. I mean, I was kind of reminded that I did see whatever the fuck the, the earlier one was. Like, once the kids start doing her sign language and horse shit, 
And there was like a flashback to the previous movie, I think. I was like, oh yeah, I kind of remember the other one. Um, I don't think the other one, I don't think I saw that it was maybe four or five years ago. I don't think that was an IMAX 3D experience for me. Um, I mean, there is a human, like all these movies that have like some epic monster going to kill the world or whatever the fuck. There's always like some family drama horse shit in the background. Like that's the B story. Like, okay, the world's on its ass. But, you know, Ben Affleck and fucking Bruce Willis have to decide if they're going to get along when he marries his daughter or whatever the fuck. So in this one, the storyline is, can this, you know, uh, intelligent white woman with a short haircut, can she be a good adopted mother uh, for this, you know, special tribe kid who speaks to Kong, King Kong and uh, she, you know, her people are in the Middle Earth or whatever the fuck it is. So, luckily for us, the answer is yes. Spoiler. Uh, adoptive Karen mom can raise the uh, international exotic child uh, to success. Thank you. World peace. Yes. Awesome. So, just horse shit upon horse shit. But, you know, once again, for what it was, the movie's pretty good. I mean, oh, special effects, you know. And it makes you think about some of the, the black and white crappy Mothra movie. Oh, yeah, Mothra comes in. Was there, did I interpret this correctly? Because a lot of times it feels like the human beings in this movie are basically just, like, translating the weird King Kong Godzilla shit to us. Like, teaching us what the fuck is going on in the movie because it, it's hard to make sense out of this horse shit. Like, you know, it was it like there's an evil King Kong scar who's got like a red, he's kind of like a giant red baboon and he's like evil. So is, uh, so is he like based on scar from the Lion King? Like I'm getting all these goddamn movies mixed up in my fucking head while watching this thing. Um, and, uh, what the fuck happened? So something, but you know, I don't know. It's just, it's fine. It's just, it's just visual candy. When I first got into the theater, I was thinking, man, I want to go see this one again. Maybe I missed something relevant in the first 30 seconds or 10 seconds that I missed. And I'm starting looking through my goddamn app like, oh, I got to get another ticket to see this next week before while it's still on IMAX 3D. And then I'm, starting, you know, about halfway through it. I'm like, do I really need to see this thing again? Not really. I mean, the story's not that good. It's just, oh, what do I say about the old black and white? You know, it's just interesting, like 50, 60, 75 years ago, people would go see these monster movies, Godzillas and all these other assholes. And the, the, the special effects, they really did try their best, but I mean, some of them were just kind of laughable, but people back then believed this horse shit. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, it's Mothra. It, it was like a fucking uh, paper napkin or something with a string on it. And um, I do recall that it, there was a time, maybe the 2005-ish era, 2002, I think it was like The Incredible Hulk and a couple of other of these, you know, movies. Um, they had these special effects and people were openly saying how crappy they looked. I do recall that era. I mean, it wasn't a whole lot of movies, but there was two or three or four. And I think one of the Hulk movies, because there was the Edward Norton one and then the other guy one. And it was like, yeah, these movies look like shit. Um, so there was a time, you know, when the technology was starting to build, but it wasn't quite up to par. Now I think it's up to par. I mean, I think we can honestly say that, you know, these movies here look really good. And some movies do hold up. I did see The Matrix last night, the original, which I did a nice review on. The Jurassic Park, 1990, whatever the fuck, 93, I guess. That holds up, and so on and so forth. Okay, folks, so MikeMessier.com. I have a huge evening scheduled, uh, taking my artwork on the road. Very exciting, my artwork, doing all these wonderful things. We've got the fucking WrestleMania weekend for those that give a flying fuck. Uh, one pro wrestling and sports fan for all the wrestling fans. Me and my buddy Jimmy Faluka did a nice State of the Wrestling Union. One man in a camera films. Uh, I'm thinking of doing other things, but I haven't done them. That's it, MikeMessier.com.